attacks on September 11, 2001 introduced the American people to a new foreign enemy, Al-Qaeda, a militant Islamist organization led by Osama bin Laden. American intelligence agencies, though, had known about Al-Qaeda and its threats since the 1990s. Yet, they failed to adjust their policies and share intelligence that could have prevented the 9-11 attacks. Why? One reason, they did not understand how grave this threat could be. But the anti-Western sentiments and political volatility that created the conditions for Al-Qaeda and other like-minded groups to rise go back nearly a century. In 1918, near the end of World War I, the Ottoman Empire, which had ruled Arab lands for almost 500 years, collapsed. Britain and France stepped in, dividing the land between them, forming the modern boundaries of the Middle East. Then came the creation of the Jewish State of Israel in 1948. Originally, the UN had intended to partition Palestine into an Arab state and a Jewish state. But the Arabs rejected the plan they viewed as unfair, sparking a decades-long conflict between Israelis and Palestinians and the surrounding Arab countries. Osama bin Laden would internalize both European influence in the Middle East and the Palestinians' defeat as great humiliations, pointing to America's support for Israel's success. His grievances with the US, however, were not only based in past politics. They were rooted in religious ideology. Bin Laden followed the teachings of Said Qutb, an Egyptian thinker credited with inspiring today's global jihadist movement. In the late 1940s, Qutb spent two years studying in the US, where he became disgusted by what he perceived as the depravity of American culture. Qutb longed to reinstate what he considered the height of civilization, 7th century Arabia, when Muhammad and Muslim armies ruled. How? Kuteb argued all Muslims must take up arms against the non-believers, which included any Muslims who rejected his brand of Islam. This philosophy would be used by bin Laden and Al-Qaeda to justify mass murder. Kuteb's personal story, too, would become inspiration for revenge. In 1954, Kuteb was imprisoned for planning the assassination attempt of secular Egyptian president Gamal Abdel Nasser. In prison, he was regularly beaten and tortured, which only strengthened his resolve to keep writing and galvanizing his supporters. Nasser, threatened by Kuteb's rising influence, had him executed in 1966. But instead of killing a movement, Nasser created a martyr. Kuteb's story and his book Milestones would become an inspiration for generations of extremists, including Ayman el-Zawahiri, who would go on to become bin Laden's right-hand man. Born in 1951, Zawahiri possessed strong Islamist sentiments from a young age. At just 15, he founded a militant cell calling for the overthrow of the secular Egyptian government. At 22, he joined the Egyptian Islamic Jihad with the goal of establishing a theocratic Islamic state in Egypt. Like Kuteb, Zawahiri would be imprisoned in 1981 in connection with the murder of then-President Anwar el-Sadat. Zawahiri, too, would be beaten and tortured in prison. But this only strengthened his extremism. Just a few years earlier, in 1979, the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan to aid the communists in the Afghan civil war. Bin Laden had been working to help finance, recruit, and train Arab freedom fighters. Known as Mujahideen, they had declared jihad, or holy war, against Soviet troops in Afghanistan. It's during this war that Bin Laden would meet Zawahiri, who led a faction of the Egyptian Islamic Jihad after his release from prison. In 1989, Mujahideen finally succeeded in pushing the last remaining Russians out of Afghanistan. Emboldened by this victory over the Soviets, Osama bin Laden, along with Islamic scholar Abdullah Azam, formed Al-Qaeda. Then, in 1990, Saddam Hussein invaded Kuwait. The U.S. sent troops to its ally, Saudi Arabia. But the presence of foreign Christian troops in Saudi Arabia, home to Islam's two holiest sites of Mecca and Medina, enraged Saudi-born bin Laden. Bin Laden would cite this grievance as a major motivation for the 9-11 attacks. Over the next decade, Zawahiri and bin Laden would work closely together, eventually merging their two terrorist networks. 
Like Zawahiri, bin Laden had grown critical of the regimes in the Middle East, who maintained relationships with Western nations and failed to bring his idea of a properly Islamic government to fruition. To counter these regimes, bin Laden looked to fight the United States directly, believing violence would force the Americans to withdraw from the Middle East entirely and allow groups like Al-Qaeda to take control. Throughout the 90s, the West experienced multiple attacks, including the 1993 bombing of the World Trade Center, the bombings of the American embassies in Kenya and Tanzania in 1998, and the 2000 bombing of the USS Cole in Yemen. While the 1993 World Trade Center bombing was never officially linked to Al-Qaeda, the motivation echoed bin Laden's sentiments. With so many warning signs, how then did the most powerful nation in the world fail to anticipate the 9-11 attacks, which seemed so long in the making? American law enforcement agencies fought amongst themselves and lacked coordinated intelligence sharing. They also failed to fully appreciate history, how decades of violence and volatility had created a powerful movement of religious fanaticism and hate, determined to take revenge against what they perceived as the source of their discontent, the center of Western values and power, the United States of America.